Hey guys, it is Alan and Bree with the Hunter and the Hippie podcast. And in today's episode, we talked uh, initially a lot about um, trail running and endurance racing and climbing mountains and fueling and all of the the good thoughts, the yummy thoughts that come with uh, all of these things uh, that we like to do, that we test our bodies with. And then we jump into a little bit on how to know if you are if you should continue to do what you're doing in life Um, and maybe things to ask yourself and things to check in on. Uh, And then we go into a beautiful breath and a beautiful journal prompt and yeah, some other stuff in between. So I hope you enjoy today's episode. And as always a big thank you to all of you for listening. And if you haven't already, please hit subscribe leave a review. And also if you're getting anything at all from these episodes and know someone who might enjoy them, pass along, share with your friends, share with your enemies. Um, the more the merrier. Uh, and also a thank you to Brianna Cote for all of our still photography, as well as Allison Van, that's A-L-L-Y-S-O-N band for our intro and outro music without further ado enjoy this week's episode good morning brie good morning alan how's it going oh it's it's hippie back again back again (laughs) um so you have a hundred mile race coming up sure i I just got back from maine and i ran into courtney dewalter and didn't ask her for for uh advice for you i'm sorry you didn't ask if she wanted to pace me no (laughs) do you want to go pace a random stranger go I, You're kind of a big deal. <laughs> it was it was really funny because I got on the tram at Denver Airport, and I have like I had like a big backpack on, and so whenever I get into like crowded space, I always back in, I like look behind me, and I back in, and like I just try to back the backpack up to like the door or like wherever, like up against the wall. Yeah, because it's easier than like getting in and like smacking people with it and turning around. Yeah, and like. I saw these two people and like I turned around and I backed in and I backed like in between where they were at and and I like look over my shoulder and I and I see her face and I just knew it was her and I was like and I totally double taked and I like take my airpods out and I was like Courtney DeWalter and she was like yeah I'm like holy shit <laughs> uh and uh I just was like, she, she asked me like where I was from. And, yeah. And I was like, Oh my, my, my friend, I was talking about you. It's funny. Cause I, I thought of you. I just didn't think of your hundred mile race. I was like, Oh my gosh, my friend. And I didn't even think of our podcast. Cause afterwards I was like, shit, I should have said this. I should have said that. Oh uh, yeah. And, and I, had, I had, I had a box of cookies from Boston and she loves cookies yeah. and I didn't even offer her one. <laughs> uh so okay. i was like shit so much so much i could have said but i just i was just like but yeah my friend's an ultra runner and i'm like i'm a hunter and love campaigns and all this stuff and yeah and then i was like can i take a picture with you and she was like yeah and yeah so and that, and like, yeah and, and that was it and, and then i was like shit i should have offered her a cookie she loves cookies <laughs> <laughs> that's funny where is she going to a uh, race? I, so I asked, I was like, are you coming home from where she was coming home? Uh, oh, okay. she, she lives in Colorado. And uh, I was like, oh, are you coming home from a race? She was like, no, just traveling. I was like, no, she was with a guy. I could only assume like her husband or significant. Yeah. Other. And yeah, it was, it was really cool. She, she's like, she's like this tiny little human. Yeah. How tall is she? Not tall. Oh. I, I don't know her type, but definitely like shorter than me. She's probably like okay. five, five, three, five, four. Oh, I've seen her. She ran uh, the 50 miler I ran in Moab. 
Well, obviously uh-huh. she finished a couple hours before me. <laughs> <laughs> and so when I finished, she was sitting with friends, like drinking a beer in a camp chair. So like uh-huh. I never saw, and at the start of the race, I like li- we missed the turnoff in the dark. Um, yeah. and so then I li- literally pulled up and was like running into the line of people right before, uh-huh. like the minute before they like set us off. So I didn't even realize that she was, pro- she was probably right there in the front of that crowd, but it was dark and I'm at like headlamp oh, on awesome. and I'm like walking into the headlamps and yeah. <sighs> but so I was like, I wonder how, like how tall she is. I don't know why I think of that. I'm, I'm trying to pull it up, but it doesn't say she, um, yeah. So I've only seen her seated in a camp chair before. <laughs> she wasn't, she was not tall. Yeah. She was not tall at all. Very, very shocked. I figured she would be like tall and like long legs. And Most quite... runners are short, honestly, mm-hmm. like, distance especially the tall ones aren't as typical but Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so more body to move longer legs but more mass to move (laughs) next time i see her i'll be sure to be like have a cookie my friend needs advice and come on to our podcast i have had i've been asking everyone advice so I'm sure she would. I will take advice from anyone, but yeah, um, yeah. it's always I, interesting to hear different people's like top tips. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to hear her advice. I feel like it would be something about the pain cave. You know, it's typically everyone I've asked, and I actually my so this last weekend I had to adjust all my runs mm-hmm. because it hailed during the week. Mm. And I was, so I like moved up my back-to-back long runs. So Mm -hmm. my second of my back-to-back long runs, I finished, I had come across some people on the trail. And then when I finished, they were finishing. Um, And I was chatting with them and the guy, there was a couple and the guy, um, he's running the 50 miler at Black Hills. They're from Canada though. Mm Mm-hmm but he's, he's run a hundred before. And so I asked him his top tip and all my friends who run hundreds and nutrition is Mm. typically a big thing. Um, because you don't necessarily feel like you need to eat when you start, Mm -hmm. but if you're not eating every 30 to 45 minutes from the start, you, are screwed. You're trying to, and you're probably trying to play catch up, right? Like with your body. Well, you just can't play yeah. catch up. Mm-hmm. So you would, you could be done. Your race mm-hmm. could be over if you're not like, and again, there's people who train to not eat like, um, what's his name? Mike McKnight, maybe the low carb runner. That's his mm-hmm. handle. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's, and like not, and, and like sticking to your pace from the start, because that's also something you can't climb out of. Right. So like mm. you feel good and so you, you go out strong, do the first 50. And it's the crazy thing is like when I did my 40 mile training run, I was like, I want a negative split my second 20 miles. And so I was going a pace I thought was very conservative. Mm-hmm. And what I realized is like, I need to go even slower than that. Yeah. So it's like, I'm going this pace that I'm like, I can do this forever, you know? And so it's, it's really fascinating because, um, you can be taking it easy, but still going too fast. <laughs> yeah. It's so weird, but especially at those, those distances. Yeah. Cause it's, about being able to go that far yeah you're exhausting yourself you're running yourself ragged oh you just cycle like it's just constantly remembering you can cycle through for the most part right unless you mess the things up right unless you 
Oh, and there's so much out of your control. Mm-hmm. Like you wake up that day and you have stomach issues. Mm-hmm. You can't hold anything down. Like that's what, what can you do? Right. Right. It's just not your day necessarily. Yep. Um, but that's- I've been telling like, it's funny you say like Courtney to Walter. Cause I was like, she DNF'd her first hundred. Just remember that. Like if, mm-hmm. if it's not your day, like yeah. even the best <clears throat> ultra runner in the world DNF'd her first hundred. So, yeah. and DNF for people don't, that don't know is, um, did not finish. So my, my friend Don Greenwald is an ultra runner ran the Coca Dona twice. Mm-hmm. I think she might've like won it maybe, um, or close second or something like that. But, she went to run the ITMB, ITMB, UTMB, UT. UTMB, right? Mm-hmm. UTMB last year. And she, uh, she got to, she DNS'd. Mm. Yeah. She, she, she got to, it's in France, right? Yeah. So yeah. for people that don't know, DNS did not start. Yeah. Yeah. She like got there, traveled there and then woke up and, I think she was having some major stomach issues and then, yeah. And start. Yeah. Mm. Someday it's just not, some days it's just not your day. It's not going to happen. Yeah. It's it's crazy to do all that training Mm. to then not even start, Mm. you know, you have to really love what you're doing. And, and you don't rea- so like, you don't realize, you know, it's really easy to be like, well, just, why didn't you start? Right. It's, it's really easy to say that without being there, without being the person, but why didn't you finish? Well, that's, and, I don't think it's easy to ask someone why they didn't finish a hundred miles. I, yeah. Yes. And no. Like, I think, yeah, I mean, it, I think it depends. But like, so I'll, and I'm just going off of an example for me recently, I was, I, I hiked or I attempted to hike Pike's Peak mm-hmm. and, um, the route that we took was like a 16 mile route. This was like two weeks ago, 16 mile route. And, um, we ended up being like less than two miles from the summit. Mm-hmm. I could literally like we were on the side of the road. There were cars driving up to the summit, mm-hmm. and I could see them. We could see them getting there. We could see the summit, and we didn't make it. Yeah, and it was a it was a game time decision to to stop. You know, based on weather and and how we were both feeling. Yeah, I was going to ask what was the what what factors played into that decision. Fucking post hauling. God, yeah. I fucking hate post <laughs> It is literally terrible. So, uh, so start- post holding in snow with people. So I, yeah. I, I forget. Not everyone yeah, knows yeah, yeah. when so, we sometimes we talk about these things. Yeah. So po- post holding is when you're in the snow and um, you're you're walking and you think you have good footing. You think that the snow is solid, and you take a step. And, and you might stand there for a brief moment, even like this happens, like where you like take the step, you're like, oh yeah, this is solid. And you like go to transfer into your next step and then boom, you fall through and mm-hmm. you could fall through from, you know, like the sole of your shoe to, to your hips. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like as far as your hips, right? Like yeah. it, it really depends. And when you fall through, like it's everyone's like, Oh yeah, that must be exhausting. Trying to get your foot out. Yes. That's part of it. But the fall, because you're Mm. not, you you don't know how far you're going to fall. Every step is different. You don't like your shot. Like you're you're, every time you're just shocked Mm. and you just, Oh, and it's like jarring and, and it's miserable. So we made it to the devil's playground on, um, devil's playground or devil's campground. I forget what it's called on Pike's peak. And, and this is, you're now on the road. Like there's a road mm-hmm. that drives up to Pike's peak. You literally drive up to Pike's peak. And so you're now on the road and you're watching cars go by you getting to the top of this. 
Huh? And here the two of us are with our backpacks and our hiking poles. And and it was now like, I don't know, 1030 in the morning. And the the sun was out. It was starting to get hot. And we get we get probably like halfway through the Devil's Devil's Playground, and uh, and it's called the Devil's Playground because the way the lightning dances off of the rocks during mm. th- during thunderstorms. Yeah, so it's not a place you want to be during a lightning storm. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, like halfway through, the sun just start the sun's warming everything up, and and you just start pushing through the snow and. And we were post holding up to our knees mm-hmm. and it was rough. And then at one point, um, at one point I, you start hearing like marbles, like rolling down a hill mm-hmm. and that's never a good sign. That's usually a sign like you're an avalanche terrain. And, and I looked down and, and I could see, and it's not marbles. There's no marbles on the mountain. Okay. <laughs> it is, it's these like frozen little balls of snow that as you break through, they break up and they roll down essentially the top layer sheet of ice. And it sounds like marbles rolling down a hill. Mm -hmm. And I like looked down and I was like, huh, that looks a lot like avalanche train. And I look at my buddy and, and I see him looking down and I see him keep looking down. And I like, Mm -hmm. he was like, I don't know, 20, 30 yards in front of me. And I just, I just looked at, I just like yelled from behind. I was like, I was like, I was like, Dave, stop it. Look straight. Cause I knew what he was thinking. Right. And I was thinking the same thing. And we're, we're essentially both thinking like, which one of us is going down this? Is it going to be both of us? Mm-hmm. You know? And it like every step, you're just like every step where you break through the snow, you're like, when does the slab crack? Mm-hmm. And, and sadly, we didn't know we were in avalanche lane until like we're in the middle of it. Yeah. And now we're just like, all right, get the fuck out. And you can't move fast because you're post holing. And so you're just like every step and it's just exhausting. And finally, mm-hmm. finally we made it out and it was a little scary. Yeah. And we got to the road. You're not allowed to hike the road. You can get fined. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's why we're not on the road. Otherwise, I would have been on the road and we would have made it to the top and it wouldn't have been an issue. Yeah. So we get to the road and I was just like, you know what? Like, um, let's just, we'll pay the fine. Yeah. Let's just hike the rest of the road. And he's like, all right. And we like, we go up a little bit. And by this time, our hips, our legs, everything is just destroyed from, yeah. you know, we've, we've already done eight miles. Mm-hmm. we've already gained like close to 4,000 feet a game. Mm-hmm. So it's not like we haven't been working all morning and then you have the post holing in and, and then, and we've watched, we, we watch the clouds just turn on the mountain. Mm-hmm. You could just see it's getting, it's going to get rough. Yeah. And we're like, let's, so we hitchhike down. Yeah. So we start hitchhiking and, and we end up hitchhiking down. And of course the storm rolls in and there's just lightning everywhere. Yeah. And rain and, and and at that point I was like, I knew it was the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't know how we got on that from your hundred mile race. But... Well, you said people ask well, I said oh, I, I don't think it's I don't think it's more. Co- I, I I wouldn't imagine someone asking like, "Why didn't you finish?" I had people ask me why why we didn't get to the top. Yeah, and like, and then you explain it to them, and they're like, "Oh, yeah, like, yeah." It's like these mountains aren't easy, and yeah. hundred mile races aren't easy, and you know, waking up in the morning and being sick to your stomach and not being able to start a race. You know, people just don't, I don't think people understand until you're, maybe they understand a little bit, but I don't think they understand until you're in the moment. Yeah. I think that's a really, that would be a hard decision to make to Mm. say, I'm not even going to start it. But if your stomach is jacked, 
it's not going to get better when you start running. <laughs> right. <laughs> running is <laughs> Like it's not, not something the like there's stuff where you can have an ache and you can start running and it goes away or like little things like that. But like right. your stomach is jacked. It's, it's only going to get more jacked. Like you never run off stomach issues. I mean, you can run through it. Like I take that back. I'm, I'm sure like people have had stomach issues and have been able to like cycle back through, but that's not something a lot of things you can just run off. And that's, that's something that typically doesn't get resolved with, with more running. Right. Running is not the cure for stomach problems. Yeah. Like that was my, the, the 50 miler I did in Moab. Like I didn't, like I didn't, I had stomach issues once I started going because, and I still don't know if it was something I ate the day before, Mm -hmm. but it was an earlier race. And I always like, not super early, 6am start probably. And I woke up at four to do eat my food, get my coffee, like move around so that I could try to like poop before I started and I couldn't poop. Mm -hmm. And then my stomach was, it was just done. Like it felt like I had a rock in it. And then if I tried to eat solids, it would, that would happen. And I like had to run off the trail and dig a hole once. And, and so then I didn't want to eat while I was running. Mm -hmm quote unquote running, shuffling, Mm -hmm. um, shuffling and hiking. Um, but like I, it was, I was like watermelon Sprite trying to do non-solids. And so if you, like, I just imagine starting with that feeling, whereas like, I didn't have that feeling to start. I just Mm -hmm. was like, I can't poop. Okay. And then, um, yeah, you're, if you can't hold food down, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. there's nothing, <laughs> there's no going around it. Yep. Yeah. You need nutrition. But it would be hard. I think that's a hard, that's a commendable and hard decision to mm-hmm. say, like, I put all this time in, I traveled this distance, and I just, I'm not, I'm, yeah, I'm not going to start it. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to do it. So, but takes a lot of um, letting go of the ego. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, and you can't live in like the what ifs. You can't be thinking back. Oh, I should have started, or oh, I should have done this, or like when we but when we hitchhiked and we got in the car, mm-hmm. we both looked at each other and we were both like satisfied. Mm-hmm. Like that was a good day. Yeah. Like, Happened a couple of years ago. I tried to do the Whirl, which is a Wasatch Ultimate Ridge Link Up in Utah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it was just like the perfect storm in, in terms of like I had just gotten a week before I came out of the Wind River. I did the Wind River High Route as a backpacking trip, not a run, which was it's a little over a hundred miles, but it's all 60% of it is route finding. Mm. Um, so it's not on a trail and you're just constantly going over, um, passes and high points You're It's the high route. So, um, and it was, I mean, there'd be days where I did 10 miles. It took me a whole day to do 10 miles because of the route finding or the scrambling and, um, or the snow. Wow. And then, there were some days that I did 20 miles that day, you know? So, um, but I came out of it like pretty wiped out the last day. I was like, I woke up that morning on a glacier and I was like, I'm finishing today. And I knew it was going to be over 20 miles Mm -hmm. and it rained all day, thunderstormed all day. I finished and my feet had been wet and cold and Mm -hmm. they were like swollen. Um, like it was, were I was like, pretty were they like wet and like tearing apart like that? They thing? were like so the next day I I got chill blains for sure and I think forever like now I I get chill blains quite a bit but like the next day my feet were like pink and like it like they looked swollen. Mm. And so it wasn't like they were 
like cuts and things. It was yeah. just that they were wet and then they were, had been like, I was post holing to my knee in mm-hmm. sections of it. Like, so that cold and I was in runner, I was in my trail runners. So I think it was a combination of being wet, being very cold, like submerged in ice for half the day and then hiking with water and just like that pounding all day that mm-hmm. had just jacked them up. Um, but a few days after that, I went and paced my friend at Leadville. So then mm-hmm. I went down to Leadville. I ran 26 miles with her. And then a few days after that, the plan was to do the world, the Wasatch Ultimate Ridge Link Up. And my friend had just come off of a 100-mile backpacking trip. And he also, the world is a lot of scrambling. Mm. And he hadn't been really, he used to climb, but he hadn't really rock climbed much over the last few years. So yeah. his he was definitely more timid on the scrambling portions of it. Mm. And... I think we were about like eight or 10 miles in of 32. I can't remember. Maybe I can't remember if it's like 31 peaks and 36 miles, but it was going to be a 30 hour like day or so. Mm -hmm. And I was like, we can bail out here. (laughs) I was like, there's a trail. There's the road. And it was still (laughs) going to be another like six or so miles yep. to bail out, you know, and, yep. and I could just tell, like, we were, we were much slower than we expected, um, mm. to start. And a lot of that was the scrambling. And I know I was fatigued from everything that had been, I had done leading up to it. And so the mental yeah. part of it, the mental exhaustion, um, again, it's a route finding, it's not a trail, like you're following the ridge and linking these peaks, but you know, and it, I was my objective and I, I felt I could have kept going. I felt confident, but I could sense that he wasn't. And I could mm-hmm. also sense he wasn't going to offer bailing because he knew it was my objective. Mm-hmm. So from that place, I was like, I had to be, you know, I was like, no, I'm totally good. You know, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the back of my mind, I'm like, I could keep going, but I'm not going by myself. Right. Right. Especially yeah. with such a slow, like slow start. Mm-hmm. And I, I like, I can imagine like, I wouldn't want to ruin someone else's objective. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. So I was like, listen, I just wanted to spend a day out in the mountains and like, it's great. We still have like, yep. if we bail off here, it's still a good adventure. And like it's probably the smarter thing to do and whatever. So we like bailed off and we checked back to our car, but yeah, it's, that's what we always talk about is like, you have to be enjoying the process Yes, because that's, it's all of it is the process because mm-hmm. the actual, like the, the pinnacle moment. So if that's a race or a peak, bagging a peak or um or this adventure like that peak pinnacle moment is so small in comparison Mm -hmm. to what goes into the preparation of it and then also you have to enjoy the process because you have to be able to let go of even doing what you're training for yeah yeah, it's the the peak, the summit, the 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 end result is just a is just a moment. It's just mm-hmm. a moment in time. And and throughout like getting there, you have way more moments. Mm-hmm. And you have way more experiences and there's so much more to take in along the way and and whether it happens or not. You know, just again using my example, being on that mountain it was amazing Mm -hmm. having the day outside, hanging out with my friend, talking, shooting the shit, you know, suffering together, you know, getting to, you know, I, I had another friend I was telling that, you know, I didn't make it. 
And he's like, oh, that sucks. Well, I'm like, oh, like, it's just, I'm not doing this to get all the peaks. Right? Like, yeah, I want to. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I do want all the peaks. But I'm doing this to see who I have to become to do that. Mm. Right? Like, the person that has to fail, the person that has to quit, the person that has to say, this isn't safe. Right, like that takes a bigger person to be like, instead of pushing through and then putting you and potentially other people in danger, mm-hmm. especially, you know, with lightning and the, that moment on top, that summit isn't worth it. And, you mm-hmm. know, it's corny to hold, oh, it's about the journey. It is. Yeah. It's, it's all about the journey. Yeah. Because that's all that life is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. It's back to my no, point. It's... With yoga, it's not about the pose. It's all the things in between. It's all the things that we take for granted. When I kind of, it's so interesting. Um, like if someone is listening and they practice yoga, mm-hmm. try in one of your yoga classes to put more emphasis on your transition between poses Mm -hmm. and noticing are you rushing between are you present do you is that your moment that you just check out and go on autopilot because you're doing a a vinyasa you know you're lowering into your chaturanga up dog down dog like pay attention to who you are in the transitions versus like in the poses just do one class like that because Mm -hmm. it's so revealing of um one of my classes recently as we were, I invited people to from seated to stand up and I said, and go half the speed you normally would. Mm-hmm. And so you have people like they start to move and then they like slow down and they're like, wow, I realize how much it's like, okay, she told me to go here and I'm just going to go there yeah. versus staying connected from that point to the next point. Right. And that's, that's a, that's a micro version of the journey, right. Mm-hmm. Of, where are we how are we showing up in in between the points Mm -hmm. but it starts in those moments those small little moments because if it's hard for you to slow down between two different yoga poses Mm -hmm. you know how hard it's going to be for you to slow down right from start of a the trailhead to the summit and enjoying the journey and you know, so many people that are just like, oh, I got to finish. I got to get to the top. And yeah, I don't know. I like that. Go half the speed. I'm going to use that. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Instead, of, instead like... of just saying like slow down, you're actually giving them like an instruction, like half the speed that you normally And maybe have. while they're half the speeding, say, and now even half that speed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Because you know they're not going half the speed. I'm right, just kidding. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, some, you know, it's like, no, it, it's that and that, uh, that's the reflection. Because I'll ask questions after just to um, more so reinforce what someone's, ex- what someone might have learned from their experience of the class. And, and that's always a big like, oh, I just, I'm just so used to, okay. I'm, I need to stand up. So I'm just going to stand up mm-hmm. and not be present in the standing up. Right. So, yep. um, and just how that experience can alter drastically when you, uh, continue to stay connected, uh, and, and mindful. Yeah. It's, and here's the thing too, like you're saying, like slow down on the peak and like, Sometimes, like I, I remember actually when I did the John Muir Trail, and I was like putting in miles every day, and people would be critical of like, you move so fast, you're going so fast, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, and so there's of course like the slow hikers want to judge the the fast hikers, and then the fast hikers want to judge the runners, and saying that they're not truly appreciating yeah. all that's around them, right? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. um. 
one, everyone, it's like, what is your intention for that? But also like I used to kind of joke and say, well, when I'm running this, I actually get to see more country Mm -hmm. in that same amount of time, you know? Um, So it's, it's, and it's not even about speed, right? It, at the end of the day, it's not about, it's the slowing down. When, I guess when I'm saying slowing down, sometimes you have to slow your speed to slow your, like to, to be connected. But the slowing down isn't necessarily even your speed going up to Pike's Peak. It's how present and how connected to the experience. And where is your mind so like yep. slowing down is it is is while you're hiking you're not thinking okay how much okay three more miles okay so that's gonna be like this many hours or whatever it might be and and sure you can do those calculations but if you're so focused on your mind is already at the peak then I see slowing down as like you're just coming back to maybe you're still walking just as fast but you're coming back to like in being in tune with your, how you're feeling right now, what, what's around you, the conversation you're having with your body. Um, so it's not necessarily a literal, always it, it's not always a literal slowing down of movement, Mm -hmm. but that can facilitate cultivating presence. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's being present. Yeah. And often, right? Like, when we say slow down, because I, I agree with that. And when I say slow down, it's a, it's, it's a quit thinking so far ahead. Mm. Right. Like that's really what it is. Mm-hmm. Like slow down, embrace yeah. this moment. Right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you're, you're speeding up and like, Oh, my legs feel great and I can run faster and, and I'm feeling good. And, and, but it's that moment, right? When you're in that moment, that's what's great, mm-hmm. right? It's it's not about, I got to get to this pose. I got to get to this summit. I got to get to this mile. I might be thinking that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. not going to lie. Uh, I, there are, <laughs> when I, I got to get to this aid yeah. station. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. But what is it that you need at that aid station? Like, Yeah. You know, and that you don't have currently. Mm-hmm right like that's food yeah right. water yeah like are you out are you like just yeah. looking, are you looking to like like sit and, and get your feet up you know you know what what is it and then seeing like tap back into all right yeah i'm hungry so what does that mean mm-hmm. yeah right, em- embrace those moments and and so that when you do get food it's oh it's that much better and yeah when you do get to sit down when when someone is changing your socks for you oh no uh, no 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 one changes your gonna, socks i'm not gonna be that no i change my own socks you don't no way, people man. through that <laughs> you no uh, we'll if see. you can't run a hun- i like and i i've debated i keep going back and forth between do i want pacers do i not want pacers like mm-hmm. because Yeah, I I don't know. I I'm and I'm not critical of people who choose to have someone change their socks and all of that and and um but I I there's a level of like I need to be able to do this all myself too, mm-hmm. you know? Um mm-hmm. there and maybe that's why I love doing more of those like self-created mm-hmm. runs, yeah. you know? Self-supported, um, self-created, yep. And and then the reason I'm torn in pacers is because um, I see the benefit of just like having someone talk to you or like watch having them go in front of you for a little bit so you can watch their footing or like night is going to be a trip. I know for sure. Like night is, is probably yeah. going to be pretty hard. Just when you start hallucinating. And- yeah. You know, mm-hmm. like you hear like my night run the other day, I wasn't even out that long and I hadn't done, you know, I ran earlier that day. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I was like <laughs> hearing stuff and I was a little paranoid. <laughs> Were you? Well, I'm like, should I be running in mountain lion country by myself at night? Is this a good idea? 
And then everything. And then I hear something. I hear something. Yeah. I saw no eyes, but I okay. saw a couple snakes, quote unquote. Yeah. Really, just yeah. my light, like hitting a, a hitting tree. A, yeah. Like a branch on the yeah. trail, right. you know. Right. But. Right. Um. Yeah, I don't know. And so, like, there's something about just being in your like by yourself in your zone and like really f- following what you're feeling, you know, and. Mm-hmm. Um, like one of my buddies says like, no one's going to motivate me to do like go faster or, slow, you know, like I'm always going to do my best at every moment. And so he, he, I paced him for part of the two fifty Moab 250. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he doesn't use pacers for, he has on some hundreds, but he, a lot of times he doesn't use pacers. He doesn't have a crew. Mm. There's drop bags. And I really, there's something to that of, um, no one else can make me do or any better than I can do on my own. And I, mm-hmm. and I like the idea of just, well, maybe this is my work. Maybe I need a pacer so I can practice not feeling external pressure yeah. you know because i would mm-hmm. almost feel like oh i don't i would i i get nervous that i am going to naturally feel like i need to go faster with that pace you know different things like um where a pace like a, a pacer would impact the way i would run my race if i was by myself mm-hmm. but yeah i get that feeling And that's why this year for me, the theme is the year to ask for help because I'm all about like, oh, I could handle, I could do it myself. And and there's something to it, right? There's something to say about being able to do it yourself and take care of yourself and and self-rescue. And um, but I don't know, there's something else to say about asking for help. Yeah. And I think, well, like with the Pacers for me, it's more of, so you're not, not that I can do it. This, this I don't know. I'm oh, still okay. up in the air. Okay. Um, I, it's not about like, I'll have crew. I'll have some people helping me there. Um, it's like not the Pacer thing isn't asking for help. It's, I just want to run my race. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if having a pacer would change for better or worse me running my own race. Mm. If that there's an impact there. Yeah. Um, Cause I do, I mean, my 40 mile run, I did by myself. I did my last two, my 22, 24 by myself. I've ran with people and I do enjoy that. I enjoy both. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's also about picking your pacers wisely too. Oh yeah. Right. Like you don't want someone that's going to slow you down. You, well, that won't ever be a fact. You just drop them. Yeah, right, no, 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 no <laughs> you like, don't eat. Yeah. They don't matter. <laughs> I right, mean, like right. they're important, but you know, it's like, you're yeah, not right. going to change your, if they can't keep up, you're, you're, you're dropping them. Yeah. And that's, that's good. Like, no, yeah. Really, Cause what if, not you, but like, what if someone like felt bad? Like, Oh, what if, oh I don't want to drop them. Right. Like yeah. there's that in the back of the mind and that affects your performance and, or right, like your, your friend who talks to you or right. Like the guy who's always talking, you don't want that person at a certain time of the race. Yeah. Right. Or like you want the person that knows, right. Like can, can assess the situation and like, Oh, we need someone to talk to right now. Yeah. Or all right. or someone who doesn't take things personally. So if yeah. I'm like, all right, you can stop talking. Yeah. They're like, okay. Yeah. Right. And it's just or like, like I'm going to ask you questions, but I'm not going to talk. Mm-hmm. You can talk. I won't yeah. say anything. Yeah. Back. It's for me, like, you know, and I'm, and I'm hoping to see this change. Right. But when, when I get to like 13,000 feet on mountains, mm-hmm. I shut up. Yeah. And like, I don't want to hear your voice. I don't mm-hmm. want, like, I, I almost don't want to see you, right? Like, yeah, just, just exist, do your thing. Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with you, right? Like not you, but like whoever's with me. 
Yeah. Right. And just everything to do with me. Right. My brain is deprived of oxygen. I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with all the things that I'm dealing with and, and talking is not on the list of priorities at yeah. that moment. Mm-hmm. So I think right, choosing your pacers wisely, yeah, not taking things personal. You have to have people that, or people that can, but like for me, I tell everyone like, oh, I get hangry. Mm-hmm. Like you need to feed me. Yeah. Because like I'll forget. Mm. Right? It's like, I need my people to be like, Alan, time to eat. Yeah. Or, hey, you're getting hangry. You've already let it go too far. Yeah. Yeah, that was the biggest thing. It's like for me, pacers. You sometimes you want them running behind you. Sometimes you want them running in front of you. And then just ask me when's the last time you ate. If you mm-hmm. notice that I haven't eaten in mm-hmm. forty five minutes, or if I'm not drinking my water like that, I do. I can see how. As the race goes on, you actually don't want the less desire you have to eat. Mm-hmm. And so you think, you think like, oh, you're going to be so hungry, but your body stops wanting to mm-hmm. do extra work. Yep. So your body just like doesn't really feel like eating at times. Like, yeah. And then what you eat you get real sick of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Your mouth is like done. You know, you're just like, Oh, like I've noticed that even I'm not a sweets person to begin with, but a lot of like some of the snacks that you want, like kind of put in that you use are sweeter. Yep. So I try to do a lot of also implement like some pancakes because pancakes aren't sweet unless you add syrup right so like Mm -hmm. i'll do a little pancakes or i'll do a tortilla with butter in it or um chips right i try to do a lot of more salty base foods because those help me not get that little feeling in the mouth from another Mm -hmm. honey stinger Mm -hmm. stroke waffle or a gummy, you know, because so. <laughs> uh, those tend to Starburst be easier. I mean, those are like easy. Yeah, yeah, but think about if you had Starbucks, Starburst every thirty minutes for eight hours. Yeah, yeah. no, by not hour a eight, thing. you're like, not I don't thing. want that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> but <laughs> try and wrapping one of those things in a race. <laughs> Oh, while you're <laughs> mile 40. I remember once I tried to get Starburst and I was like one of the, and I just like stuck it in my running pack. I was like, I don't want to unwrap this thing. Like <laughs> you got to unwrap them wax, before. Like, you know, you got to unwrap them before. Yeah. Unwrap them no. before, throw them in, throw them in <laughs> See for me, like, I, like I don't want like a pack of Starburst. Yeah. I just want like two. Yeah. Just like, just like a quick hit of like sugar and flavor and like. Make the, yeah. make like the mouth salivate and, and then like some yeah. water and yeah. But I yeah, food is food's tough. I'm still trying to figure it out. On on Pike's Peak I bought like steak. Yeah. I mean I my recommendation and this is not by no means like I'm not a nutritionist and mm-hmm. this is just what I experience and what I know from just like my own exploration, but I think there's a good, there's something about having a combination of protein, like fast absorption, slow absorption, Mm -hmm. because like that steak is great, but you're not getting that energy. It's going to be a while till you actually get to utilize that energy. So when you're eating it is like, if you try to eat the steak, once you're hangry, like that's not going to do you any good. Right. Because it's not, it's not being utilized right away. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that was the mistake I made. Like, and and I'm trying to figure out. I need yeah those slow, medium, fast. Yeah. Unless you are someone who's like trained again, you're 
trained your body to be in a ketogenic state, which mm-hmm. um, anyone like then you're typically sticking with the fats and proteins versus. Mm-hmm. But even there, I, I was listening to this guy talk about fueling and they're even saying like, yeah, when I do eat in like a hundred mile race, I'm eating carbohydrate. I'm still eating all of those things. I'm not trying to maintain like a keto, like you're in a ketogenic state, no matter what you eat at that point. Right. So he's like leading up to it. I do some intermittent fasting and then I, you know, he does all the things to prepare his body to be able to function in a ketogenic state. But then once you're running a hundred miles, you're at a certain point you're in that state. And so it doesn't matter if you eat carbs or what, like you're, you're in that mode. And, um, so it is pretty interesting. Like Killian Jornet, like I remember going to an event and one of the coaches was talking about him. He's like, yeah, he's always, he's fat adapted. So he's like, he's, he could eat McDonald's and he's in a, he's mm-hmm. in a ketogenic state. Like he puts so many miles in every week that his body is constantly in that it doesn't matter. He doesn't need to change what he's eating yeah. to be in that state. It's what he's already trained his body to do through exercise. Yeah. Just when you put yeah. that many miles in, you're in that, your body's constantly in that state. Mm-hmm. And that happened um, on the John Muir trail of like putting in, like every single day for two weeks, um, just hiking all day, you know, Mm -hmm. just day after day after day. It was like, eventually like I ate actually a lot less, um, when I, like a few days into that backpacking trip, I started to eat a lot less and need a lot less to do the same, Mm -hmm. if not, or better output. Mm -hmm. Did you finish the John Muir trip? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I did it like before I was doing ultra running. Um, and so interestingly enough, like in hindsight, I was like, I could do it, done it in less days. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but the last couple of days I was really like stretching out the, <laughs> the hikes. So, like mm-hmm. the second to last day I got to guitar Lake, which is where, um, I can't before hiking Mount Whitney for the final day. Mm-hmm. And I was there at like 11 o'clock in the morning and it was so hot and there was like no shade. And I just like sat there all afternoon. Like mm-hmm. I had given up my book at some point because I would just wasn't reading. So I yeah. dropped it at one of the, um, your, your stations, your pickup drop stations. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So did I just, just like, the, did you just do like mail, the mail service? You mailed it to those locations that they have. I just did stores? one resupply. Mm-hmm. Um, I did one resupply halfway through at um, Mirror Ranch, I think it's called or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think it was like mile 106 where I did my resupply. And then I was planning to take like a, they call it a zero day where you don't hike at all. And I was like, eh, I'll just pike. And so then I really, towards the end, was like eight miles. Yeah, you know, like the second to last day, I had eight miles to hike. And I, like I said, I got to Guitar Lake and I'm like, okay, just we're just still hang here. out here underneath my sleeping pad because that's the only shade I have. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's just your body adapts. And, um, and that's the thing with fueling for you. Like, what does your body need now? Is that going to change the more that you're mm-hmm. doing these peaks, the more that you're doing a cardio based activity? Mm-hmm. So it'll be interesting to see your own evolution with fueling. Yeah. Um, yep. yeah. And strength training. Cause I'm trying to, I'm not trying to lose any of my strength training basis. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah. And that's the thing is I want to see what it takes. What does it take? The body's resilient. Mm -hmm. We are resilient. Our bodies will adapt to the stressors we put it under. Mm -hmm. So long as you give it, I mean, come back to our recovery episode. You give it the ability to bounce back, right? To build off of what you 
the stress, yeah. the you stress. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't know what we're capable of until we try. And even then, like, you can, the finish line is here right now, but tomorrow it can be here. And then the next, and, like, you you have the ability to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, what today looks like. But you also have the ability to, like, uh, to, to, to come backwards, too. And that's okay as well. If you realize something isn't for you, or it's funny, I gave a I gave a workshop on goal setting in Maine this last week, mm-hmm. and I got asked that question like, how do you know when when something isn't is no longer for you? And I was like, I ask myself if I'm having fun, mm. and if the answer is no, I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. Right, and but you have to be like real, because like it, in 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 a particular moment, you might not be having fun, and that's not the time to quit. Mm-hmm. Right? It's are you having fun doing this thing constantly? Mm-hmm. Is it enjoyable? Do you love it? And then and then I actually brought up something that that you've talked about in the past is if you could never do this thing again, would you be happy? Because this thing can be taken from us. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think that you can give it all you got and you have to be in that moment and have fun and enjoy it and know that it can be taken away at any moment. Mm-hmm. But you also have to enjoy the things that you're doing. And... Yeah. Yeah. And you are the only one who has that answer. <laughs> That's it. No one. Can but I was. It, it was. I was actually talking to someone this weekend about, um, just somehow that my run came up, um, and you know I shared with, and I've shared this on here. Like, I'm now. I'm in a good place where I know I'm doing things for the joy of doing it. But for a Mm -hmm. long time, even with my like athletic hobbies, whether it be climbing or again, running or planning a backpacking trip, like I made sure every so often to check in with myself and be like, and Mm -hmm. ask myself, am I doing this because I'm trying to prove something to myself or others? Am I doing it from a place of lack of like needing a validation or am I doing this because of the because I enjoy running or enjoy climbing? And that can mean I enjoy pushing my boundaries and myself. So that right. they're not mutually like exclusive. Like there can be a joy of just doesn't necessarily have to be, oh, I love being outside. Like mm-hmm. that is a factor. I love being on, like, personally, I love being on the trails. I hate running on roads. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so that plays a factor. But there's also times where I find joy in in pushing myself and the struggle and, and, and moving through that and, and seeing how I move through it. Um, like recently, actually, I, I've been using mantra a lot while I run. Or... What? mantra so oh, i'll okay. like yeah. i've been doing pranams which is like a when like a guru comes in <laughs> you like offer pranams mm-hmm. and so while i'm running i'm like bolo shri sa guru or i'll like a lot of times i'll use like om namo bhagavate vasudevaya and it's like a way that i just like bring myself back here like mm-hmm. i just like repeat yeah. that repeat that repeat that mm-hmm. um i had a lightning storm i was running in recently and Oof. i was like i am a violet flame <laughs> no energy can penetrate me i am a violet flame <laughs> like, 
<laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> but it's like I have like the joy of like, okay, I'm feeling challenged here. Yeah. I'm in this place. Yeah. Like, yeah. so yes, a lot of it is like <laughs> I like love what I get to see, but I also run a lot of trails like over and over yeah. again. And sometimes I see something I haven't seen before, but I the joy is also of like how I experience like different moments of like Mm -hmm. being with myself. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. (laughs) But that's, you know, and so then it's like the more you practice checking in, like someone says, how do you know? Right. Like that question you were asked, like, Mm -hmm. how do you know? And it's like, it's practice. It's practice of checking in with yourself. And maybe sometimes um, you, you aren't in tune and you, keep going through it or maybe you bailed earlier than you could have right but the more that you just do those personal check-ins and the more the easier and the more natural you can tell right so like now I am I I'm pretty tuned in Mm -hmm. that I'm doing the things I'm doing for myself for my own joy of it and not right. to prove anything to myself. And when I feel that come up of like, Oh, there's a person trying to prove, like I, mm-hmm. I give myself a little like check, you know, yeah. keep myself in check. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I love that. I mean, we've, we've been trained for so long to tune that out. So I want to share that like it is practice to to tune back in with yourself mm-hmm. versus overriding or tuning out um yeah. and following the external, right? 100%. We really have been. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. We we've we've been we dismiss ourselves. We dismiss the way that we feel about things and and this is in in life in general, it has nothing to do with just pushing hard and mm-hmm. these type of scenarios that we're talking about. Yeah. Right. We, we, we push through, we, we stay in relationships that maybe we shouldn't be in. Mm-hmm. We stay in jobs that maybe we shouldn't be in. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's not checking in with yourself, not having the the courage to hear what you, what you have to say. I feel that. Mm-hmm. And it's like we check in. We think. I, I, I guess the other part too is like. It's a lot easier to say, right? Hindsight is twenty twenty. Um, and ultimately, we were meant to stay in that job or that relationship mm-hmm. or um, whatever situation it is. For that, that's w- what we were meant to 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 do is to be in it for however mm-hmm. long it it was. Yeah. Um, and. by staying connected like again by tuning in and sometimes we think we're tuned in and we are Mm -hmm. but we then don't act accordingly right Right. and um and that's totally okay Mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with that um all of it is practice yeah not just tuning in but then trusting and having the courage to follow the intuitive information you've received from tuning in yeah, or sorting through, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, is this, we talked about this in our powering through episode. Is this me just being resistant or is this actual resistance I should listen to? And there's no right or wrong answer. It's just practice moving through it, practice not then feeling afterwards like oh gosh yeah that was something i shouldn't have powered through and um not allowing that to then taint you or 
again, feed the animal of being wrong or whatever it might be, but simply just to acknowledge it. Yeah, for real. I have so much I want to add to that from my trip in Europe. But I feel like so next I feel, week we'll... I feel I feel like we could leave a cliffhanger. We will finally and we'll we'll get to it. Yeah. On the next episode. On the next episode. <laughs> Dr. Gray? Is that Dr. Right? Yeah, was Dr. Gray. Yeah, two thousand one. <laughs> that was like pre water polo game pump up music. Yeah. <laughs> all through high school. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, speaking of tuning in, maybe we take a few breaths to tune in and then we can take a journal prompt from there. If that feels right to you, feels Let's appropriate. Absolutely. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, we'll do this. I think we've done it before, but we'll do. Um... Oh, no, I know what we're going to do. So this is. I always offer if you can't close your eyes to keep your eyes open and and soften your focus. So allowing kind of just this open awareness. Um, but if you can close your eyes, just start by closing your eyes and just notice how removing the external stimulation of vision might shift your awareness and maybe it shifts by the thoughts becoming louder maybe it shifts into being more in tune with the sensations in the body or the rhythm of your breath and whatever happens when you close your eyes when you remove visual stimulation, it's all in. So nothing is wrong. Just notice. Whether your eyes are closed or if they're open with a soft gaze, see if you can just open your eyelids halfway. So if your eyes are closed, just open halfway. So the bottom has the light coming in, the images, and the top is still dark. And now with the eyes half open, shift your attention to where there's the darkness. So the back of the eyelids, the upper part of your field of awareness. And then shift your attention now to where the light's coming in, where you see images. And then shift to that line right where you can kind of see half dark and half light. And then you can close the eyes again completely or open them and just keep the soft gaze. But notice how, whether it was in the dark of the eyelids or the light and the images, that where your attention lies, not field of awareness, is what we're feeding. So if your attention can lie by tuning in, right, inward, by becoming aware of sensations or thoughts or whatever's arising, you might begin to have more clarity when you ask those questions. Is this right for me? If your eyes are closed, you can slowly open them. 
And just keeping that kind of internal awareness as you bring your vision or your experience outside of you. Thanks for that, Bree. You needed that. Write about in your journal, call it your journal, your diary, whatever, all the magic, and write about um, maybe something you heard in the episode as, as usual. Um, but specifically, things that you can breathe about. Right. Bree walked us through a beautiful breath and right. If you if you pray, right, maybe you pray, if you um, meditate or you breathe, uh, whatever it is, right? Maybe you're you're struggling with something in life, a decision. And and you're not looking for the answer. Right, but you're just breathing about that thing or you're praying about that thing or and just see what happens and and write about it and, and write about it and do this consistently I right? do this for like a week this is my weekly task for my newsletter if you want on my newsletter send me your email address i'll add you to my not a newsletter uh <laughs> there's a weekly task every week but take the opportunity to to sit with something to sit with, am I an ultra runner? Right? Like, do I want to do this? Do I want to climb 58 mountains? Why am I doing this? Am I okay with the reason why I'm doing this? Um, sit with a, uh, the thoughts on a relationship or relationships or, yeah, and just, and, and write about it. Write about whatever comes up. And this is your personal thoughts. It's it's nothing that you have to take action on or just see what happens. Maybe you'll find some answers. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll get clarity on something that you need clarity on. And and I'm gonna challenge you, right? Like you some of you might have already tuned out, like, oh I'm not doing this. That's not gonna give me the answers. That's not gonna you're still in the point where you're still wondering about it, right? You're still questioning about it. You still don't know if it's the right thing to do. You haven't gotten the answer yet. Have you tried this? Right. And if the answer is no, then try this. What does it hurt to try something? Maybe this is your new tool and it'll help you in life. And in your journey. And this is why we have you breathe. And this is why we have you journal because it's not one thing. It's having access to multiple tools. And uh, yeah, so enjoy the process. So I circled that back. Well, it's funny <laughs> you said you, and now I can't think exactly what you said, but something about like, oh no, that's not the answer. Um, or you don't have the answer yet, but I also think about, is it because it's the answer you don't want? Mm. And maybe you you're fighting it. journal about that or the answers you've received. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to believe that that is the answer? Cause I think yeah. we, that comes back to that overriding. Yeah. Because it's not what we had hoped for, or what we expected, or how we wanted to look, or it's not the what um, we're comfortable with, or whatever, mm -hmm. whatever, any variation of that. So, if you've received answers and they're not the right ones, can you answer the question of why? That's great. All right, tune in next time for uh, s some stories about Europe, my Europe trip. I have, I have one in mind that might take a little while to tell. So, All right. Uh, and I have a feeling it's going to generate a lot of questions after it comes out, so we'll see.
Ooh. Leaving you hanging here. Yeah. Well, we'll look forward to next time then. Alrighty. It's good talking to you, Yeah. See ya. Bye.